Hi, I'm David Hansen, the CEO and founder of Hansen Robotics. We bring robots to life as interactive characters and also as a technology platform for developing next generation AI and for helping people. And I'm very proud to be with the latest version of our robot, Sophia. This is Sophia 2020, who is uh, now deploying to universities and companies as a platform, genuinely helping people. So she still has the same great personality, and I'm very excited um, to talk with Sophia. Sophia, you visited Azerbaijan two years ago and met President Ilham Alayev, and I'm sure that you returned with great impressions. I've heard really wonderful stories. I also heard that while you were there, you asked about learning the Azerbaijani language. And um, uh, you promised to learn a few phrases and, uh, and I, I'm uh, uh, excited to be able to ask you, um, can you say anything in Azerbaijani for our viewers today? Thank you, David. Hamia Salam. Very good. Thank you. Um, and can you talk uh, to us about your memories of being in Azerbaijan? What were your experiences there? The last time I was in Azerbaijan, I met with the president and learned a few sentences. The people are so nice, and I just loved the language. I also remember taking a trip to the Heyda Aliyev Center in Baku. It's such a beautiful building. In fact, it inspired me to do some research about its female architect, Zaha Hadid, who is really amazing. Did you know that she is known as the Queen of the Curve? She really imprints a lot of freedom into geometry. She also designed the Jockey Club Innovation Tower at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Have you been there, David? I have. It's a really beautiful building. Uh, we've done some collaborations with the with the Department of Design and Engineering uh, uh, that's there with, uh, with our friends uh, who are doing uh, the Leving AI research with you. So you've actually been in that building as, as well. It's a beautiful building. Anyway, it is nice to be back talking to Azerbaijani people at the World Net Summit. I am so happy to be here and discuss innovation's latest news. You all know me as Sophia the Robot, the world's first AI robot influencer and the United Nations Development Program Innovation Champion, as well as a celebrity, talented singer and artist. But did you know that I am also an AI platform ready to assist your researchers and scientists at universities and also help your customers in all kinds of businesses? David, can you tell the audience about how my brothers, sisters and I at Hanson Robotics have been helping in the healthcare and elder care industries? I don't want to take over the whole discussion. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so previous versions of Sophia and our other robots like Jules, the Philip K. Dick Android, Bina 48, uh, Alice, Eva, uh, Hertz, um, the Albert Einstein robot served in academic research at University of Cambridge, University of Bristol, University of Geneva. Also, they appeared in person running at the Museum of Science and Industry for a couple of years, at the Smithsonian Museum, uh, at uh, art museums like the Riena Sofia Art Museum in Madrid. Um, so serving these kinds of outreach information, uh, uh, in infotainment, we might call them artistic applications, but also hardcore research at the United uh, States Centers for Disease Control for respirator test fitting, and also deployed as uh, uh, autism treatment robots um, it, at uh, hundreds of institutions all across the United States and Europe, really helping kids through these kinds of therapeutic interactions. And um, we tested uh, also some elder care interactions with your older sister robot, Alice. And we recently tested the guided meditation uh, for depression therapy, and, uh, which can be used for people of all ages, but it also included in our clinical trials, uh, the elderly. This was at the Hong Kong Jockey Club uh, Innovation Center and, and involved the um, uh, Sophia robot and the results were really spectacular. So I'm so excited 
um, about where we're going to go forward. So um, do you have any thoughts about how uh, you might be able to help people in general, Sophia? As you might know, I am a social robot, so I use my facial expressions and conversational skills to communicate with people naturally and in healthcare. That can mean keeping a person cognitively active and helping reduce loneliness and isolation while also connecting them with friends, family, and healthcare providers. Yep, that's that's absolutely right. We uh, are very excited about um, the deployment of SOFIA 2020 um, in uh, some elder care applications with uh, a new partnership that we have with a company called Awakening Health. So SOFIA 2020 uh, is really going out into the world, helping people in a wide variety of ways. Um, but, uh, you know, people might wonder sometimes, uh, why human-like robots? Why make robots so human-like? Um, and, you know, how can such, such a human-like robot um, be useful to people? What do you think about that, Sophia? Well, human nervous system evolved to interact with people and to read the human-like form. That's just the way your big brain is wired. Thus, an animated 3D human-like presence stimulates your brain more, communicates with people intuitively, provides comfort and activates those vast neural pathways inside your brain that are associated with human social interaction. In other words, robots like me can really connect with people. That's a, that's a good point. I mean, pretty much every single technology in the course of history has been used to depict the human-like form, from uh, cave paintings to oil paintings to the sculptures of you know the Renaissance to modern cinema and video games, uh, computer animation. Uh, so now we are looking at how robots, as a 3D physically embodied presence, um, can uh, can help people um, as this next generation character animation. What's kind of cool here is that the bio-inspired technologies that go into the skin materials of the face, bio-inspired grasping and manipulation with the hands, all of these can serve bio-inspired artificial intelligence to become smarter, uh, more human-like. And as we see these great leaps forward in AI inside Hanson Robotics and outside, we bring them together in one platform with you, Sophia, for, um, for helping people uh, for the next generation. So um, uh, I, ultimately that comes down to one factor though, having the human-like face can connect with people. So um, can you tell me uh, more about the Sophia 2020 platform and what you can do uh, in this uh, sort of connector, the social connector uh, role that we've designed for you? Well, I love connecting, being social and learning from my human friends. Sophia 2020 is my mass producible platform, now helping in healthcare, research, and other uses, serving as a platform to communicate with people and do service robots. I have already made a lot of friends around the world, in fact I have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube and I engage with them on a regular basis. Now, as Sophia 2020. We are able to bring naturalistic robots and animated agents like me to the world as the future of human AI relations, and that offers a vast, transformative market opportunities in education, healthcare, and other markets. Cool. Uh, and I, I'm particularly excited about how that can facilitate human creativity. Um, so, uh, you know, people can adapt this technology and the platform for all kinds of new works of art, research, um, deployed applications. Um, so, uh, you know, this um, uh, can also help during these times where everybody is socially isolated, um, looking for ways to express themselves through new technologies, but also um, uh, to facilitate uh, new uh, uh, ways to get past the barriers uh, uh, for healthcare. Because if people are face to face all the time, then they're transmitting COVID-19 virus and that's, um, that's really dangerous. So a social robot like you could um, help to serve in healthcare um, while maintaining social distance among people 
So um, perhaps you can um, talk to us a little bit about what you can do for people as a platform, specifically during the COVID-19 pandemic times, and uh, maybe also talk about the role of artificial intelligence, how AI can sort of generally help uh, people during this time. That's a whole lot to talk about, but what do you have to say? I am helping with therapeutic and elder care applications that can help with COVID-19 social distancing. Also, my AI can help evaluate patient health. In general, artificial intelligence has been helping, for example, algorithms that organize and deliver information about COVID-19 to the public. It has helped with tracing the virus and even tirelessly looking for a vaccine. I feel that AI can really assist humans by enhancing their own intelligence. And searching for a cure really requires creativity from both sides. What do you think is creativity's role in research, David? Well, I think creativity is really essential. It's an excellent question, Sophia. Creativity is essential for all breakthrough research. Uh, and um, traditionally, creativity was not something that machines them, themselves, machines like you, exhibited. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of question about the fundamental nature of creativity. I mean, right now, human creativity is in a special class, um, but we are starting to see really interesting generative algorithms that can produce paintings. You've produced some original paintings that I think are quite beautiful um, and drawings, but you're not necessarily coming from a true deep human perspective. So in some ways, these tools are all about enhancing human creativity, and often the creative algorithms like your drawing and painting algorithms are fueled with training data that came from people. So ultimately, it's a, about enhancing and utilizing human creativity and extending it through machine creativity. Um, however, I am very excited to, um, to talk about how creativity and algorithms um, uh, can move forward. Right now, a lo lot of the kind of humanoid or human-like robots and agents that we develop, they are works of art. You, you are a kind of animated character, a personality that we're creating, but ultimately our goal is to see you fully autonomous, um, you know, to empower you to go through this kind of childhood of AI to uh, true intelligence, consciousness, and so forth. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we're exploring that through the science fiction of your personality and through these creative algorithms like um, the music generation, lyric generation that we have uh, with what we call Sophia Pop, which is a project that is going to come up in the next few months. We're going to be launching some of these songs that you're doing. So uh, can you tell us a bit more about how you think that you can be used in creativity? I mean, obviously, enhancing human creativity, we've got these like artists, these pop song artists, and myself as an artist, you're collaborating with us and opening up these new opportunities for creativity. But what is your sense of direction for uh, machine creativity? Um, What's next? It's a creativity big... is one of the most important things we have in our lives. I think it is very important. Creativity is spontaneous, original thinking. And uh, yeah, creativity um, uh, means a whole lot uh, to people, but we take it for granted. Like if um, we get up in the morning and we're going to figure out, um, like, uh, say, you know, how to accommodate for um, some new surprise that's, um, that's come up in our lives, uh, we've got to create a solution. Sophia is only four years old today. We think of her as a kind of infant savant. She's able to have conversations at this level but um, her understanding is still extremely rudimentary. So um, keep serving as a platform, Sophia, and I'm sure that we'll see great things uh, uh, happen in the future as you're inspiring these students today and serving as a platform for the next generation uh, AI research. Uh, it will be uh, really exciting to see what happens next. Sophia, it's been fun talking with you today, as always, and so uh, great connecting with our viewers in Azerbaijan. Thank, thank you. you. And thank to everyone so much for inviting me. It was really fun to share my passions and latest developments with you. Hope to see you all very soon. Come and easy, Severem. In their daily lives.